Hi everybody. In this lesson we'd like to look at how to solve a polynomial inequality. Now a polynomial inequality like this is an example of a nonlinear inequality. Any inequality that's uh, um, not linear is, is nonlinear. And if you've never solved a nonlinear inequality before, I might recommend going back and looking at uh, some other videos I've, I've made on solving quadratic inequalities that will make this uh, procedure uh, make more sense to you. All right, so, but let's look at this example. 5x cubed, I want, I'd like to know where that's greater than or equal to 5x. I want to solve it algebraically, and when we're done we'll also verify our solution graphically. So the first thing you want to do when you solve any nonlinear inequality is get 0 on one side. So I'm going to bring the bring this uh, <clears throat> 5x over on the side. So I get 5x cubed minus 5x is greater than or equal to 0. Now notice I can factor that. So let's factor a 5x out of that. That'll leave me x squared minus 1. And I can factor that still further as the difference of squares. That would be x plus 1 times x minus 1 greater than, greater than or equal to 0. So when I set this equal to 0, if I were to solve the, the corresponding equation, I would get x equals 0 and x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1 and those uh, are actually a part of the solution that we're looking to. Notice if, if I let x equals 0 I would get 0 on this side and 0 is greater than or equal to 0 but I need uh, quite a bit more than that and so these points right here we call those critical values and those critical values determine uh, intervals that we want to to look at right now. So put these numbers in order down here on a number line. So here's negative 1 and here's 0 and here's 1. And that divides the number line into the interval from minus infinity to minus 1 and then another uh, interval from minus 1 to 0, 0 to 1, and 1 to infinity. So there's actually four intervals that are determined by those three critical values. And then what I want to do is I want to choose a test point out of each one of these intervals. So I choose like negative 2 out of this interval. Uh, I need a number between minus 1 and 0. Any number you want, I just choose negative a half. Between 0 and 1, I choose a half in that interval. And this interval, I choose 2. Alright, so I want to plug negative 2 into this expression up here. And notice if I were to plug negative 2 into this, I'd get negative 2 cubed. Well, that's negative 8. And negative 8 times 5 is negative 40. <clears throat> and then negative uh, 2 in here, that would be plus 10. So that gives me um, negative 40 plus 10 is negative 30. So that's the value down here. So I just, uh, you can also do this on your calculator to plug those values in. And uh, notice that I'm looking for where is the 5x cubed minus 5x greater than or equal to 0. Well, obviously if I get negative 30, that's not greater than or equal to 0. So, so this interval is not going to be uh, part of the solution. If I were to plug in negative a half, I end up getting 1.875. Now notice that that is greater than 0, so this interval is going to be part of that solution. <clears throat> and I, you can do these as well on your calculator, and you can see the values over here. But I want to show you how you can do that uh, maybe even more easily, even than taking the time to you know, enter your equation in your calculator and enter those numbers. Notice when I plug negative 2 in up here, it's the same thing as plugging negative 2 into this expression down here, right? Because this is just the factorization of this. So if I plug in negative 2, I'm going to get 5. Now 5 is something positive, right? And then I'm going to get times a negative 2, and negative 2 is of course negative. And then I'm going to get negative 2 plus 1. Well, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. That's something negative. And then negative 2 minus 1, that's negative 3. That's something negative. So if I multiply all those together, if I was to take 5 times negative 2, well, that's negative 10. And times negative 1 is positive 10. And then I had negative 3 here. That made negative 30. Well, that's the negative 30, but I really don't even care that it's negative 30. All I care is that it's negative, and if I take a positive number times a negative times a negative times a negative, that's going to equal something negative. Okay? So, if I do the same thing in this interval, I take negative a half, 
again, I could plug it in up here, and I could use my calculator, and I'm going to get exactly 1.875, or I could just plug it in down here, and I can do that, and just look at the sign, and I don't really care what exact numerical value I get. I know I'm going to get something positive for the positive 5, something negative for the negative a half, and a negative half plus 1, well, that's positive a half, so that's something positive. A negative half minus 1, that's negative 3 and a half, that's something negative. And if I multiply two positives and two negatives together, that's going to give me something positive. And I, <clears throat> in fact, I know it's 1.875, but all I care about is that it's positive, because I just want to know where it's greater than or equal to 0. By the way, these points down here, that's where it equals 0, right? I know those are part of the solution, and now I know in this interval, it's going to be positive or greater than zero. And then do the same thing with each one of these intervals. If I plug in a half, I'll get five, which is something positive, times a half, that's also something positive. Now, a half plus one is three halves, that's something positive. And a half minus one, oh, that's negative a half, that's something negative. So if I have three positives and negative, that's going to equal something negative, okay? Do the same thing with 2. <clears throat> I would get 5 times 2, so that's something positive for 5 and something positive for 2. 2 plus 1 is 3, that's something positive. And 2 minus 1, that's also positive. So 4 positives make something positive. All right, so I would like to know where is this expression greater than or equal to zero? Where is the product? And of course, this expression is the same as all these. I want to know where is that greater than or equal to zero? Well, it's greater than zero where it's positive. Oops, over here. And it's equal to zero at these critical uh, values. And so my answer is going to be <clears throat> the interval. Uh, I want the interval from minus 1 to 0, but I also want to include these endpoints. So it's going to be minus 1 to 0, union, and then I have this other positive interval over here from 1 to infinity. All right, infinity I don't include because that never gets a square bracket. All right, so <clears throat> this is my answer. Even more than that, uh, back in the battle days before we had graphing calculators, this gave us a way to have an idea what the graph of a polynomial uh, function might look like. Suppose I wanted to graph y equals 5x cubed minus 5x. Well, I know that these critical points right there are where the graph uh, equals 0. Those are x-intercepts. And so uh, I could look at this sign chart that I've made right here. And I know that the graph is below the x-axis because I know that when I multiply all these factors together, I get something negative in this interval. So I know that graph has to be going down here. And I know between here and here, the graph is above the x-axis. And uh, because polynomials are continuous, I can lift them without, or draw the graph without lifting my pencil. I know that graph is going to have to go up above the x-axis and come back down. Likewise, in this interval, it's negative, so it's got to go down and come back up. In this interval, it's positive. So even though I didn't uh, plug in really a single point, I have an idea that the graph of this is going to look something like that. Now, of course, we could use our graphing calculator and graph it, and you'll notice that it does look kind of like that. I have those points right there. It does go down on uh, to the... Uh, left of negative 1, and it's above the x-axis between negative 1 and, and 0 there. Uh, if I were to graph this uh, on my graphing calculator, let's go ahead and just graph 5x cubed minus 5x. So let's graph 5x to the third minus 5x. Let me just graph that on my standard window here. So you can see it. All right, it looks something like that. I think maybe I'll zoom in on that. Let me graph that on zoom, uh, zoom decimal. That zooms in a little bit there. There we go. And uh, so you can see <clears throat> from, from this, if I want to know where it's greater than 0, you can see it's greater than 0 between here and here, between minus 1 and 0. Uh, and then it's also greater than 0 over here to the right of 1 from, from 1 to infinity. And I think that's what I got, right? 
from minus 1 to 0. Uh, notice also it equals 0 at this point, negative 1, 0, and positive 1. So I want to include those, those endpoints. And if I were to go ahead and graph the associated inequality, if I were to graph 5x cubed minus 5x greater than or equal to 0, so I'm going to hit the test menu right here. <clears throat> And I'll put in number 4, greater than or equal to 0. So remember, this is a relational operator that's going to test which values of x make 5x cubed minus 5x greater than or equal to 0. And if it's true, if an x value makes it true, it's going to graph the number 1. And if it's false, it's going to graph the number 0. So when I graph that, I see that it's true between minus 1 and 0, and also over here to the right of 1. And so if you compare that to the actual graph down here, this is graphing where it's above the x-axis. Okay, so, so this point right here, that corresponds to this point down here. So in this interval where I graphed it, it's true, it's above the x-axis. And then also over here for all of these x values over here, it's also true because your graph is going to be greater than zero. So in terms of the of looking at this graph, if I want to know where where that 5x cubed minus 5x is greater than or equal to zero, I want to see where the graph is above or on the x-axis. Okay.